logic of the state is, is it, it is applying in the European context does not apply to Africa because Africa starts using different rules of engagement. One of those uh, rules of engagement is their loyalty towards the elders and you and being unable to question the elders. It has been a dominating theme for quite a, a long time. The generation that freed Africa from independence, uh, from colonialism into independence, uh, appropriated some African values, some African values to the exploitation of young people. That's what explains um, this type of uh, situation. You now have a situation where this old generation believes that because they fought for freedom, because they liberated the continent and the respective countries, they have some sort of natural rights to rule and govern. A friend of mine calls it governing until the grave. Um, even if you're on the wheelchair, you still can lead. That's what you find in the African continent. And it's probably also a world phenomenon, is that there is a minimum age for you to become president. They say you cannot be president unless you are 35. But hypocritically, it doesn't say you cannot be president over a certain age. So, as far as the status quo is concerned of youth political participation, there is a limit. They must be 35. In fact, if the African Youth Charter says that the age category of youth is from 18 to 35, it means that there is no possibility of a youthful president on the African continent. Because that's what you generally find, that they, they put that age limit. But even if you are 190, even 200 years, you can still be a candidate for president. Since the mainstream national political discourse and institutions does not, do not make time and uh, give opportunity to the youth, they found alternative ways. Uh, and they've been doing it since independence. Uh, but when I say independence, I'm speaking about the late 1950s when Africa began to get independent. They've been doing it in different ways by establishing institutions such as the Pan-African Youth Union, such as the recently the African Youth Commission and many other. Uh, but these institutions were repeatedly and constantly resisted by the elders of the African continent. But what we saw in 2011 is that the young people got fed up, they got so frustrated, and they started toppling dictators who have been in power for a long time. Uh, Mubarak of Egypt became a casualty. Ben Ali of Tunisia became a casualty. Colonel Gaddafi became a casualty. And recently, in 2014, Bryce um, Compaore of Burkina Faso became a casualty. So what I'm basically trying to explain to you is that you begin to see an era where young people, in finding alternative ways of political participation, were able to effect change in the state. What is political participation if it's not the actions to influence the constitution, the shaping and the decision-making process of government? Government had to make a decision. President had to free the country. So that's an alternative form of political participation. But that's what characterized generally the events from 2011 to date in North Africa. Unfortunately, in West and East Africa, political participation took rather a different um, and unfortunate turn of events where young people, since they are excluded from mainstream political participation uh, because they feel that their voices are not being heard, uh, because they believe that some core principles of what they believe are not being adhered to by the state, they bought into extremist version and extremist narratives of political participation. I dare say political participation knowing very well that uh, it's not a term that is used in the literature to explain uh, young people joining Boko Haram and all those uh, Al-Shabaab and all those movements as uh, political participation. They went there and these movements or this extreme group are fighting against the order, established order, uh, which one way or the other is not to their satisfaction. 
and majority of those people that are joining are young people. And on a close inspection, it begins to be clear that it's a form of political participation. In Southern Africa, however, there is a new development over the past four or five years where young people start protesting and establishing independent movement outside mainstream political parties, outside state institutions, outside formal youth organization, and really existing in the civil society sphere, um, protesting for social justice, protesting for free education, protesting for free uh, for healthcare and many things like that. As far as particularly political participation is concerned, uh, certain things they need to change. This idea that youth participation means, in fact, this is there has been an arrogance uh, and disregard of, of, of young people by leaders, even of the African Union, who say that no, we are quite very serious with youth participation. That is why at this event the theme focuses on youth. A flimsy thing such as a theme can be regarded as political participation. That's absolute nonsense. So we need to speak to and about practical measures. If we are saying that there is a minimum age for one to become president, there should also be a minimum, maximum age for one to become president. So those, those, those are the, one of the practical things that we want to do. But the institutions such as the African Union should be able to make the circle bigger instead of focusing on mainstream elite politics. Because the, the challenges that we face with elite politics is this. For example, in 2006, yeah, in 2006, the African Union established what is called African Youth Chat. In 2010, many countries have not ratified it. As we're speaking today, 18 countries didn't ratify the African Youth Chat. But at the Banyu Plus 10 conference, we said, that by the end of 2016 there's going to be 100% ratification. But we're still speaking about 18 countries. So that shows you that it is not enough to have rhetorics that are in declaration and statements. We need to move forward that. And what we need to be doing, lastly, is to link the youth to the programs of economic freedom. Because effectively what is happening now, they look at the youth as people who are going to kick around the football or entertainment. That's why when you look at many ministries of youth, they have their youth and sport, youth and recreation, youth and civic education. But it's only Zimbabwe, I think, that look at the youth in the context of economic development. And uh, that's what needs to happen in order for them to be able to solve the remaining contradictions of economic power.